Okay, in this lesson we're going to continue to investigate geometric sequences, and this is called Geometric Sequences Module 2 because it's the second lesson. We're just going to be investigating some more problems. Uh, first of all, as a review, geometric sequences uh, are sequences found by multiplying the previous term by a constant r called the common ratio. So if you look at this sequence here, 2, 6, 18, 54, 162, etc., that's geometric because the common ratio in this particular case is 3. Or in other words, to get from one term to the next, you're always multiplying by 3. Uh, the general term, which is known as Tn of a geometric sequence, is defined by the formula. The general term is always the value of the first term times the ratio times the number of terms minus 1, or the nth term minus 1. Uh, the, the description of each particular term is here. Uh, another thing that we're going to investigate, or another thing that's important to understand, is that the common ratio of a geometric sequence could be found by taking any term and dividing it by the term before it. In a lot of cases it may be obvious, but if it's not, you could do that. So for example, if you use uh, the previous, or this geometric sequence as an example, if we take any term and divide it by its previous term, you're going to get the common ratio. If you divide 18 by 6, you're going to get the common ratio. So any term divided by its previous term should get you the common ratio. We're going to do two problems here. Uh, this first problem says, and if you want to pause these at any point in time, you may, this first problem says that in 1990, Canada had a population of approximately 26.6 million people. So that's 1990, uh, 26.6 million people. Okay, and I'm going to call that term one. Uh, in 2013, Canada had a population of approximately 34.8 million people. So you could continue to go all the way, uh, but what we know it would take a lot of terms, is that in 2013, that would be 34.8 million people. Uh, the question states, if the population growth is a geometric sequence, what is the average annual growth rate in Canada? There's two ways to do this. One is to use the formula. The other way is to use more of a pattern, what we know from the patterns. And they both get us to the same place. Um, if we use the formula, you have to be really careful about what term number the last term is, particularly in word problems. Um, if 1990 is considered the first term, then although 2013 is 23 years later, 2013 is actually the 24th term because it's term 1 plus 23 years. So this term number would be term 24. So if you'd like to use the formula, uh, the formula would suggest this. Uh, so Tn, which is the general term, is equal to T1 times R to the n minus 1. Uh, the value of the nth term is 34.8. So this would be 34.8 is equivalent to the first term, which is 26.6 times the ratio times n minus 1. And n for the last term is 24 minus 1. So we get 34.8 is equal to 26.6 times 23 ratios. Uh, or if you want to use the uh, more of a pattern method, you get to the same place. You could ask yourself, how many ratios are there in order to get to the last term because we're multiplying each of these by the common ratio or in this case uh, the growth rate uh, in order to come up with the final population. So in this particular case to go from 1990 to 2013 is 23 ratios because it's 23 years later so if you're not using the term numbers you could do the same thing. We know that 26.6 times the ratio 23 times is equivalent to 34.8. Now if you investigate these two formulas, they're actually identical. So either way you do this, you come up with the same initial formula. Uh, and the rest of this is just solving for the ratio. So what I'll do is just uh, divide by the coefficient, which is 26.6. So we have r to the power of 23 is equivalent to 34.8. Divided by 26.6, so that's 1.30827. And in order to come up with the ratio, we need to the opposite of the exponent 23 is the 23rd root. Uh, so if we take the 23rd root of 1.30827, we'll get what the growth rate is. So in this particular case, uh, if I go into so 23rd <coughs> square root of that answer we get 1.01175, 1.01175, it goes on for a bit, but that is our answer, or the growth rate per year. Uh, let's look at one more problem. This next problem is talking about a swing, and what it says is a swing reaches a maximum height that is 85% of the previous swing. If the swing starts at a height of 4.5 meters, 
answer the following questions. First of all, determine term 1. Well, what this is saying is that term 1 uh, in this list would be 4.5 meters. Uh, term 2, etc., uh, would move forward from there. But term 1 is 4.5. The common ratio in this particular case is 0 0.85 because 85%, so the common ratio is 0 0.85. Term 1 would be equivalent to 4.5. Uh, and finally, uh, determine what Tn is. Tn is the general term. The general term would be 4.5 times the ratio, which is 0 0.85 to the power of n minus 1. That's applying uh, T1 and R to the general formula. Now, <clears throat> the next question is an extension question. and says, what's the maximum height of the swing after six swings? So whether you'd like to use a picture or use uh, the formula or use some other model, it's important that you realize if the term number is directly related to after the certain number of swings. Uh, so if we started on a swing, let's say we had a swing that looked like this. Okay, and there's a little man on there. Uh, at his height is 4.5 meters. That's term one. So in this particular case, if he goes back and forth and he's going to be at 85% of the previous height, so maybe he ends up somewhere down here. Uh, what that's going to be is 85% of the previous height. That's T2, but that's actually after one swing. So again, just to be clear with you, uh, 4.5 even though it's term one, is not the first swing. Term two is after one swing. So if you use this method, if you're going to use the formula, it's important that you realize the pattern here is that term seven is actually going to be after six swings. Okay. So if you would like to use the general formula, just realize that you're trying to find term seven. So that would be after six swings. Uh, another method to do this is just to realize that what's happening is it's going to be six ratios in order to get to uh, the seventh swing. So either way you do this, but we're trying to find actually the height after six swings, which is term seven. So if we use the general formula, that would be that term seven is equivalent to 4.5 times 0 0.85 to the seven minus one. So that would be after six swings would be 4.5 times 0 0.85 to the six. So either way you do this, you end up with the exponent of the six. That would be after six swings. Uh, so finally, uh, if we just figure this out, exponents first, so 0 0.85 to the power of six, and then times that by 4.5. And the question, just read carefully, says answer to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. I'd have to times that by 100 to get it into centimeters. So that would be 169, so 1.69717. That's in meters. So what that means is that's going to be 169.7 centimeters after six swings. Uh, the next question says this. After how many swings will the swing reach a maximum height less than one meter? Uh, probably the easiest way to do this. There's actually no way uh, to algebraically necessarily do this. So you're going to have to just do guess and check. We want to know uh, when I do 4.5 times 0 0.85 to the power of what is going to be less than 1. Okay, so we're trying to find out this. So I'm just going to do some guess and checking here. Uh, let me, for example, do, I don't know, let's see if it's after the 12th swing. So after 12 swings would be uh, the 13th term, but 13 minus 1 in the general formula is 12. So after 12 swings, I'd use the exponent 12. Uh, so there we go, and times it by 4.5. Is that less than one meter? It is, but it might be too many swings. There might be a swing earlier than that that's under one meter. So if I do 0.85, maybe to the power of 10, let's try that, and times it by 4.5, that would be after 10 swings. Uh, that looks to be, let's, that's still under one meter. Let's see if nine swings works. So 0.85 to the power of nine, uh, and then times 4.5. That's higher than one meter. So we know that you have to wait until after 10 swings. So we know that this has to be 10, which would be after 10 swings. And that's done by the guess and check method.